Media Churches. And a very warm welcome to church this morning. I thought it was going to be quite quiet this morning, but suddenly there's a lot here. So, um, one or two announcements. The Ways and Means Committee are meeting this Thursday at half past seven. And that will be by Zoom. Um, and the link, I'm sure, will be sent out to you. Um, articles for the Trivia magazine have to be handed by next Sunday, so you've got a week to, to do some scribbling. Um, so articles next Sunday. Tradecraft have brought out their Christmas catalogue, and there's a link on the web page, on the website for that. And if anyone can't access it or anything, then speak to me, I've got a, a spare catalogue. Um, we're hoping to have an Advent Bible study, so maybe for four weeks. It will probably be by Zoom, but if you're interested at all, speak to me. We're at the moment working out whether it should be during the day or in the evening, but we'll decide that when we get some feedback. And the church will be open on Wednesday between 10 and 12 for private prayer, and I will be around. I think these are all the, the notices. We have our call to worship. You call us into the light. Fill us with your peace. You encourage us to face our fears. Surround us with your love. You call us to new paths. Uphold us with your resurrection promises. We listen to the hymn 124, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. <laughs> Paul writes that neither death 
and our life, our things present, our things to come, can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So let us rejoice that no matter what is happening around us, no matter what we have done, God forgives and will never let us go. Thanks be to God. And now we join quietly in our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And John is going to read from Judges chapter 4 and then Matthew 25. The first reading is taken from Judges chapter 4. Verses 1 to 7. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, now that Ehud was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jim, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. Sisera, the commander of his army, was based in Harasheth, Hagoi. Because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years, they cried to the Lord for help. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lamidoth, was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between, between Ramah and Bethel, in the country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abinor, from Kadesh, in Nephtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take with you ten thousand men in Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Caesarea, the commander of Jabez's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishan River, and give him into your hands. Second reading is taken from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man travelling to a far country, who has called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on the journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and set the council with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make him ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed, and I was afraid. 
and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I am not sown, and gather where I am not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore take the talent from him, and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And casting the profitable servant into the outer darkness, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thank you, John. And well done with all these proper names of the Old Testament. <laughs> We're going to listen to the hymn 83, and I don't know how well known it is. But it's written by Bernadette Farrell, which has a number of hymns in the hymn book, including Longing for Light, Christ is Dear Light, Shining the, the, the Heart, Shining the Darkness. And so she wrote this as well. It's from Psalm 122. I rejoiced when I heard them say. And it did look very nice. 
But it did bring back to me my own experiences with cooking. I, I really quite enjoy cooking. Maybe not so much now, but certainly in the past I have. But my first experience of cooking was in first year in secondary school. Usually we were supposed to take woodwork, but there was a shortage of woodwork teachers. So we had several weeks of cooking. And I, I was so enthusiastic that I volunteered at home to make the tea one evening. And my mother said, okay, go ahead. I think it was Welsh rare bit or something like that. But whatever it was, I burnt it. And I, I, I think it was very adventurous. I, I made a sponge, which looked very nice, and the outside was very nice. Inside was remarkably soggy. And my brother was scaling, but my parents were very encouraging. They said that the table was very nice to meet. <laughs> but they were very gracious, they had trusted me, and were very gracious and even praised it. Through their teeth, maybe. Now, this is a bearing on our parable today, where the master praised two of the three servants for the efforts that they had made. It's a parable of the talents. And that is sometimes confusing saying that because it's not talents as in special abilities. It was actually a talent was a gigantic sum of money. If you could work for 15 years and not even earn enough in that 15 years to make up a talent. It was ginormous. And in the story, the master trusted his three servants with talents. One with five talents, the other two talents, the other one talent. And I say the enormous sum of money, this was really trusting these three servants. The first two servants invested and doubled the money. But the third one was so terrified of his master. He was so scared of losing everything that he just dug a hole and buried the money in the hole. But when the master came back, he praised the two who doubled the money. The one who had hid it, he condemned. Now, it's quite a difficult parable because we sympathize with the third, or at least I do. I always saw myself in that situation and think, oh, maybe I would have done the same. He was terrified of his master. And he froze. He just froze. But also the master's reaction seems so harsh. Instead of well done, good and faithful servant, is condemned to the outer darkness. But this story is not about money. It's about trust and it's about faithfulness. And I, I rather think that the, the first two servants had invested the money and things had gone wrong and they lost it. The master would have said, yeah, I trusted you. I took the risk of trusting you. You have made an effort, and that's what I'm looking for. It's making the effort. Whereas the third servant had made no effort. He didn't even put it in the bank to earn a little interest. But as human beings, we have been entrusted with so much. We've been entrusted with so many resources. So many inner resources, all the gifts and talents that we have. And we're encouraged to use what we have to the glory of God and to the benefit of those around us. We all have our different abilities, whether it be cooking or knitting, whether it be repairing things. Some are good with people. We're encouraged to use what we have 
to the fool. In the Old Testament, in, in, in Judges, we read of Deborah, and she was living in a very patriarchal society, and yet as a woman, she was obviously gifted, gifted in inspiring the people around. She was very charismatic. And she was able to use her gifts to inspire Barak, who was a general, to confront the big army of Sisera with his 900 iron chariots and win the day. They used the gifts that they had. We have to use our gifts, and sometimes we get it wrong, but other times we can surprise ourselves. And so it is with the church as well. We have to use our resources well too. At a time of declining numbers and whittling offerings, often we're tempted to play it safe and, and hide our head in the sand and bury our resources in the ground. But Jesus never played it safe. Our resources are God's and we must use them to spread the good news and not bury them in the hole. The one final thought in the parable of the third servant throws because he was terrified of his master in this awful image of his master as one who was harsh and cruel. But it occurred to me that sometimes people can have that image of God. We have an image of God who is judgmental, always counting all our misdeeds. And that is in the picture given to us by Jesus. The picture of God that Jesus gives us is one of love and of grace, ready to forgive and to empower us to be God's people in the world. And we respond to that grace by offering our very selves to be used for God's glory until we hear these words, well done, good Faithful servant. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. And we have, I think, for stewardship, 502, take my life and let it be.
Guide our leaders that they may govern wisely. And we give thanks for the news about the, the vaccine. And give thanks for all who have used their skills to develop vaccines. In this interfaith week, we remember our friends who are celebrating Diwali at this time. We think of our world and pray for the situation in, in the United States of America. We think of Ethiopia as well, where there's, there's trouble. We pray for our church. Especially today, we think of those involved in cross-reach as they work in the front line. How Paul we experience the care that cross-reach offers, from elderly residents of care homes to those struggling with emotional well-being, poor mental health or addiction, to children or families facing educational or disability challenges. Pray for all who are suffering in these tight days of pandemic. And for those who mourn the loss of someone or something dear. Draw close to all who fear the future and surround each with your love. And show us how to bring comfort and support in situations of hurt and pain. God of life, you hold all souls in your loving care, the dead as well as the living. We thank you for your saints of every age who continue to inspire us, for all who have meant the world to us and now live with you. Keep us in communion with them, and at the last, bring us to dwell together in your light. Bring these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And our closing hymn is in hymn 518. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the heart.